when you go to the place of sacrifice and present an offering, what the priest does with that offering is no longer your business. Many of us are not aware that it is in the same vein that we relate with the Lord when you say, I have given my life to Christ. First, you must notice that that is what is called Lord in your prayer. My Lord and my Savior. Which is to say that you have proclaimed that he is Lord and as far as that word is concerned, you don't have ownership of yourself. It means he owns you. The owner of a thing can decide to do with it whatever he wants or he pleases. Many of us have come to God with the mind that we have given ourselves to the Lord, but we still have some part with ourselves. That is why it is difficult for the Lord to do what he wants to do with us because we have withdrawn some part of ourselves, which, first of all, we have given to him as an offering, but we gave it to him to still be in charge, to still be in control on how it is used, on how it is not used. So every one of us here have come into the fold, had come unto the Lord, and some of us have the consciousness of the fact that we are called of God. Now, when I use the word called of God, I'm not talking about the fivefold. Yes, it's part of it. But everyone seated here is called of God. And it's on the ground of that call that we are furnished with all manner of graces and giftings. However, what if God has called you and refused to send you? What if God has called you and in the midst of the call he decides that you will be a mechanic? You are aware of the grace of God that, was, that came upon your life. And then God said that you will be a mechanic. I said, no, the grace is moving me. The grace is. What you are not aware of is that the owner chooses what you will do where you will function from. No matter the ideas you have in your mind, in your head, no matter the thing that you think you know, the owner decides where you will function from. And once you deny him of that lordship, you are no longer, no longer a sacrifice. So Paul say, I beseech you therefore brethren by the message of God that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice. When we go to heaven, you will be shocked of the kind of people you will see. You will be shocked of the people that you will see crown on their head. You will be shocked of the people that are decorated with stars. Why? Because they were in the place where the Lord said stay. That is where I have giving you a portion, irrespective of what is shaking everywhere. Do you remember the story I gave you about the employee, employee that a master employed about three of them or four of them and he said that one should wash toilet and the other one will be his PA. And the other one will be a cook. Then the other one said the one that washed toilet. He said, ha, ah, with all the strength and all the education I have, why will it be toilet that I will be washing? So he admired the one that was on suit, always going out with the master, with the master's bag. And he came to the master and said, sir, I will also want to go out with you. The master said, but that's not why I employed you. He said, no. I want to go out with you. So the master allowed him and he began to go out. It was the day of reward and payment that he realized that nothing was given to him. And when he got to the master, he said, why? 
He said, because you were not in your duty post, the reason you were employed, you did not perform it. And so there is no reward for you. Why, why, why am I coming this way? Many of us are not aware there are various vacancies in the spirit. There are various offices that are vacant because many of us have deserted the office that were allotted to us because of another office that seemed to sound well or appear good. And the reason why those people that are in those offices that everyone admired are failing is because the ones or the offices that were designed to be able to strengthen them, there are no people there. So in the day that they, 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 they are weak and they are trying to fall back, there is nobody there to, to support that system. And so there is a great fall. That is what is happening in the body of Christ today. That is what is going on everywhere. Some of you have a great call in the medical world. But the question is, have you first of all presented yourself to the Lord as a sacrifice? Because that is the beginning of your journey. It is only at this point that you can be conversant with yes, Lord. I don't know who I'm speaking to right now. But God will have me tell you, he can't do business with you until you let go. Jesus said, he's speaking, he said that he that put his hand on the plow and look back is not worthy of the kingdom. It's not worthy. Recently, I, 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 I have been taking time to reevaluate what we call Christianity or what we are actually running after. And I began to see a lot of things that we, we are sitting with but far from the truth. It's a discovery you will make only when your heart is made up to seek the Lord. Yes. And that's where I realized that God does not actually come after you. To begin to, to, begin to tell you certain things. There must be a seeking to be able to bring you to the point where God will know that you are interested in the matter. This is the reason why Jesus hid so many things in parable. When parables are, are given, people will be wondering, is he talking to me? Is he talking about us? Is he in the wondering? But those who know the truth, they have picked the truth that is in the parable because their heart were after him. After the truth. That is why things are hidden. That, why, why is a place called secret place? Uh, it's a secret place because it's not in the open. Not everybody tread there. There must be a level of seeking to be able to bring you into that place. And even in your seeking, you, you have to be allowed. Many of us are joking in this journey. That's why we have lost authority or we are losing authority in the nation, losing authority in the land, losing authority in various quarters with our diverse anointings that we carry. We, we hold no weight. I beseech you, brethren, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. It is a reasonable service only if you have come to the point of understanding. Mm. The day you realize that a price was paid on your head. And then you decide to yield yourself willingly. That is the day God will begin to do business with you. But till then, 
you can pray in tongues, you can jump up and down, you can do all the activities, and there is nothing that will interest the Lord until you come to the point where you can render what is called reasonable service. That is when paths begin to open, understanding of the relationship with God begin to come to you, and that is when you begin to understand why God actually placed you in a place. Why God put you on hold. Why God sent you. Why God is dealing with you the way he is dealing with you. 